Today I'll talk to you about a very important question. This is the question of how life emerged on Earth. Well, this is an important one because it differs man from other living beings. Because man, in fact, is a human being who can think, who can investigate and question. And the principal question he would ask to himself would, of course, be how did I come into existence? How all these living creatures I see around me are appeared on Earth? Well, there are two main explanations about this question. The first one is the belief in coincidences, which means that the human beings and all the livings we see around us are results of some simple coincidences. This is an idea. The other explanation about the origin of life is the fact of the creation, which means that the human being and all living creatures we see around us and the whole universe, of course, are created by a divine superior creator, Allah. There is no any third explanation about the question of life. This is a scientific fact. Well, the first belief in coincidences was integrated into the science in the 19th century by an amateur researcher called Charles Darwin. Darwin claimed that the life on Earth was process of some blind uh, evolution process. Well, the, he claimed that the living beings were descending from a common ancestor through some slight and cumulative modifications. That was his claim. But there was a message behind this claim. The message was that no living creature was created. So this false message was found very interesting by some people, especially by evolutionists and those who were following him. Well, let's sum up very briefly the uh, evolutionist idea. It claims that the life began on Earth by a single cell that has been formed in the depths of the ocean million years ago by chance. And he says that this single cell formed by chance somehow was tr transformed to some other life forms such as fishes and to the reptiles and to the mammals to the apes and at the end to the human being. This is the evolutionist scenario. Having said that, we have to check the technological level in Darwin's time, of course. Well, when Darwin said all that, they had very limited technological possibilities. And they were not able to investigate in detail the living beings. Because all they had were limited with some, uh, by some uh, primitive microscopes, as you see here. But today, in the 21st century, with the high technological level that we have reached, we are able to investigate all the living creatures in detail, even the tiny ones. And what we see is proving us very clearly that life is much more complex than what Darwin told it to be. About this complexity of the cell, look what Sir Fred Hall says to us, an English researcher, scientist. He says, the chance that higher life forms might have emerged by chance is comparable with the chance that a tornado sweeping through a junkyard might assemble a Boeing 747 from the materials therein. So he says that if a tornado can do that, if a tornado can form such a big plane as you see here, then yes, a single cell can be formed by chance as well, he says. It is the same probability. But of course it's impossible. No tornado can do that because it's obvious that there are some technological know-how. There are, it's for sure that lots of engineers have worked for nights and nights for this plane. And so no one believes in the first issue of tornado. But today, again some so-called scientists, they are still trying to convince people that a single cell can be formed by chance, although it is clear uh, that it cannot. Well, another very important claim about life, Douglas Futuyma, he is an evolutionist, a famous one. Look what he says. Organisms either appeared on Earth fully developed or they did not. If they did not, they must have developed from pre-existing species by some process of modification. If they did appear in a fully developed state, they must indeed have been created by some omnipotent intelligence. Well, if you want to gather information about the origin of life, 
what are the most reliable sources that we have in hand. There we are facing the fossil records. What is a fossil then? The fossils are the remains of the living beings that lived in the past. When we look at a fossil, it gives us a lot of information about this creature. When did it live? What kind of qualifications it had? And so on. So in a way, the fossils are remaining the history of life for us. And today there is a very important fact. The fossil records are the best evidences demolishing the claims of the theory of evolution. Because we have lots of fossils today. And there is no question that living beings have never undergone any process of evolution. When we look at the fossil records, it's clearly proving us with no question. Because when we invest investigate a fossil in detail, but it shows us clearly that this creature is exactly the same with the one lived years and years ago. So it has the same qualifications. It has never undergone any process of evolution. It's so clear. And which is more important, these creatures are appearing suddenly on Earth with all their unique and perfect forms. So the living fossils are alone enough to show us that evolution is nothing but an imaginary scenario. Let's investigate a fossil in detail now. For instance, the fossil of a starfish. As far as what the evolutionists claim, this starfish, which is an invertebrate animal, has been evolved to a fish in a period of 100 millions of years. This is the evolutionist claim. Well, if this is true, we have to check the fossil records. What are they telling to us? Well, we have to see some uh, fossils of the starfish in the, star, in the fossil records. Yes, we see them. We have to find uh, fossils of the fishes. Yes, we see them as well today in the fossil records. But if what Darwin and the evolutionists were claiming was true, we have to, say, we have to see some creatures such as half starfish, half fish. We have to see some uh, these kind of creatures between these two stable ones, starfish and the fish. And Darwin called these creatures transitional forms. He called them this way. And he said himself that we have to see lots of transitional forms if his theory was true. But today, 99% of the paleontological researches are completed. And let's forget about the billions and trillions we have to see in the fossil records. We don't have today a single transitional form fossil. This is a fact. And the fossils are proving us that there was never an evolution process that has never occurred on Earth. Well, the first one who was of course uh, shocked and uh, worried about this situation was Darwin himself. In his book entitled The Origin of Species, look what he says. Why, if species have descended from other species by fun gradation, do we not everywhere see innumerable transitional forms? Why is not all nature in confusion instead of all species being, as we see them, well defined? And he continues asking himself, why do we not now find closely linking intermediate varieties? This difficulty for a long time quite confounded me. Well, Darwin is very right to be that much confounded, that much worried, because the transitional forms he needed so much for his theory to be true have never been found and will never be, of course, because the fact is very clear and quite obvious. The living beings have never undergone any process of imaginary evolution, but they are created by a superior power with all their unique and perfect forms. This superior power, the divine creator, is Allah. He is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them. This truth is stated in the following verses in the Quran. O oh man, what has deluded you in respect of your noble Lord? He who created you and formed you and proportioned you 
and assembled you in whatever way he wills. 